if you want to talk about really trying to destroy a child's innocence, I think that one of the absolute worst stories that I've seen over the past week and a half has to go back to girls being changed, uh, being forced to change in front of boys in a Texas school district now. So there's a report here, and the school board voted on a new rule. And to give you a little, I'll give you a little bit of backstory afterward to help you explain, uh, help explain all of this to you. But basically, this was taken. This was a news report that was taken at the final vote, and they were interviewing some of the students affected by this decision after the vote. So here it is. It's a great policy. Uh, unfortunately, it's not everything we want, such as talking about even even the small things like changing the name on your student ID, uh, which you're required to wear at all times. Um, so I'm really hoping that the district makes the right decision here and votes it. Yeah, it passed. It passed. And how does that make you feel? Oh, I'm, I'm ecstatic. Hey, I'm just... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I feel uncomfortable that um, my privacy is being invaded as I am a swimmer. I do change multiple times naked in front of the other students in the locker room. And um, I, I understand that the board has an obligation to all students, but um, I was hoping that they would go about this in a different way that would also accommodate, accommodate students such as myself. So in that particular clip, you saw, I, I want to see really a comparison of the reactions. That's what I really want you to focus on here. You look at that guy, I mean, he's thrilled, He's, uh, but he's also like completely ungrateful to it. He's like, oh, well, you know, we didn't get everything we want and there's a, there's a long way to go and we're going need to need to get an awful lot more. And then the girl, I mean, she's on the verge of breaking down. You can tell she's holding back hard. Because she's about to bust out crying, and she said, I think that was a perfect way to categorize it. Her privacy is being invaded. So look at that contrast. And on the guy's side, I get why he's happy. Like, that dude just won the pervert lottery. I mean, when you talk about a teenage boy, a high school student, is now allowed to come and go as he please, walk in on any girl, any naked girl that he wants to, just roam about the girl's locker room. And not, by the way, not only can see them change and see them naked, but also gets to, I don't know if he's an exhibitionist or not, but gets to walk around naked in front of them. And what's really horrible about this is if you understand the background, the story's even worse. Because what happened with this story is originally to accommodate this guy because he didn't feel comfortable changing in front of in the guy's room because he says that he's a girl. So they said, all right, what we'll do is we'll set off a, a separate changing area for you, for you to use so that you can go there and change. Well, that wasn't good enough because to a reasonable, rational person, the truth is I never really liked changing in front of people either, like guys, girls, whatever. I was just a very modest person. Um, that kind of went away a little bit when I got older, but modesty was something that was really important in my family, and I think really important for a lot of Christian families, and because that was something that was part of my rearing, I was very uncomfortable even in high school changing in front of other men just because I didn't like being naked in front of people, uh, which is a sentiment that I think that our culture could use a lot more of. I don't think that, you know, but but the thing is I still did it, and I, I still was able to to overcome that. But a rational person would look at a guy, whether it's transgenderism or just somebody that doesn't want to change in front of others and say, look, I'm really uncomfortable with this. Could you accommodate me and give me a separate space? I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to do, transgender or not transgender. And so that should have been the end of it. OK, the guy gets his own private space. Fine. But see, that wasn't good enough because. To them, it's not about being accommodated. It's about getting special privileges that nobody else gets and getting their way and getting what they want. Screw everybody else. Don't care if it makes everybody else uncomfortable. My feelings matter more than everybody else. Because if he's giving, been given a separate space, then his feelings are spared and everybody else's feelings are spelled. And since feelings is going to be the way that we're supposed to gauge things now, 
You would think that that would be the solution that makes everybody satisfied. Well, apparently not. Because it's not just enough for him to be able to have his own space to change privately. He has to be allowed to invade the privacy of everyone else. Because then they said, well, I'm a girl and you're not treating me like I'm a real girl. I want to change in the girl's locker room. So what they did was they gave him a separate area of the girl's locker room that he could go in and out of. And he couldn't see anything. There was like a veil, so he couldn't see them. Uh, they couldn't see him. That wasn't good enough either. He's like, no, I want there to be no separation. I want to see other girls naked, and I want to have other girls be able to see me naked. It's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard of. The purpose of being in a locker room is to change clothes. The purpose of being in a locker room is not to look at other people. And so whether there's 50 people in there or you're the only person in there, the purpose ought to remain unchanged. But this guy's saying, no, I want a changing space where I can see everybody else and everybody else can see me. I don't care what everybody else's feelings are. I don't care if it makes them uncomfortable. They should have to look at me and I should be able to look at them anytime I want to. That's what's so despicable about this. And I'm the last person that would suggest that we need to make decisions based on feelings. Because even if the roles were reversed, even if the girl in the video didn't look like it mattered to her emotionally at all, and the, or the, the girl in the video reacted that way, and the guy in the video was super stoked and excited, or if he was just not excited at all, the feelings should not be the gauge of how we should make this decision. But you would think, since the left is all about feelings... And all about, well, whoever's feelings are hurt the most, that's the person we go with. They would look at the, the crying girl and say, oh, well, her feelings matter too, so we've got to figure out a way to make it work for everybody. They don't do that because the transgender person matters more than everybody else. Because they're the flavor of the week, they're the political uh, agenda item that they want to check off the list next. That's the problem. They're the oppressed class now that they have to liberate, and everybody else's feelings just don't matter because you're not part of that special class. That's why this internet uh, intersectionality garbage, that's why this doesn't fly with regular people and the left doesn't understand why it makes them horribly unpopular. Because Republican, Democrat doesn't matter. Even if you tend to be on board with a lot of the leftist agenda, you watch that and you feel for the girl. And you should. But everything about this contradicts the ideals of feminism. And that's what I find so hysterical about this. Because what they will say is, in one breath, they will say that all men are untrustworthy, sexual perverts that want nothing more than to sexualize women and degrade them in that way. Okay, if that's the case, then why are you suggesting that we should just take men's word for it when they say that they're transgendered and they should be allowed to enter a space where women are going to be naked and be able to watch them and to be able to be naked themselves. That doesn't make any sense. If you're saying that, you know, men are just perverts that want to sexually abuse women and you can't trust them, well then why are you trusting the ones that dress like a girl and saying, no, because of this I should be able to just walk around naked and see other naked women? That doesn't make any sense. And so this really does contradict all the tenets of feminism. And why is it in this case, when we're supposed to believe all women, and we're supposed to, if somebody feels unsafe or if somebody feels uncomfortable, we're supposed to accommodate them, why is it this girl's feelings don't matter? See, to anybody on the left that supports stuff like this, don't ever talk to me about being a feminist ever again. Don't ever tell me that women's feelings matter and we should believe all women. That's a crock of crap. If this is what you believe in. You can't keep holding on to this line that men are toxic and then also say, but men that think that they're women or men that say that they're women, they should be allowed to just be taken on their word and trusted and believed and everybody else's feelings don't matter. Everybody else's privacy doesn't matter. Because when it comes to being sexualized or feeling unsafe, is there anything worse than being naked? Like, you never feel more vulnerable than when you're naked. That's true of men and women. Because there's nothing protecting you. There's nothing between you and the other person. 
Like you're never at a more vulnerable point than when you're naked. There's never a point where you're more unsafe than there. And if it's, well, it's my body, my choice, and people shouldn't be allowed to look at my body that I don't want to, then why are transgender people allowed to do it? None of this makes any sense based on the left's own stated values. And that's what I find so incredibly frustrating about it, because there's nothing more degrading for a woman than being forced to undress in front of a man. Like, if I went out as a white evangelical Christian and said, um, no, I'm just going to find some random woman on the street and, you know, I'm going to make her undress in front of me, they would say, well, you're a sexist pig. And by the way, they would be right. But why is it that somebody, because he dyes his hair pink and wears fake boobs, that all of a sudden he's qualified to make a woman undress in front of him, and that's perfectly okay? None of this makes any sense at all. Don't ever preach to me about male privilege or the patriarchy again if you're going to give a license to a man to walk around and view naked high school teenagers. <laughs> Just in case you were wondering, yes, I am a straight white Christian male and a small government constitutionalist, which means I have no chance of getting any help from the government and wouldn't accept their help even if they offered. Which means I'm going to need you to like and subscribe because my gun collection is not going to pay for itself.